Hello everybody, this is Terry Jeanette with the Tapping Flamingo. Today's video, we are going to be creating something using stuff from June 2021's Enchanted Forest subscription from Curated Beadbox. So this month, <laughs> you will notice in the unboxing that I was not too happy about what we got. These looked very wintry to me. By the way, I'll put a link up here so you can go check out the unboxing. But as I went through all the beads and stuff, I got an idea. We're going to make a mala necklace. So I need 108 beads, one of these beads, and I'm going to use this halite pendant. I believe it is a halite. Let me make sure. It's actually turquoise, white dyed turquoise is what they're calling it. These, all they say is that they're gemstones. And when I did some investigating and research, I'm thinking they're onyx. I always was under the impression that onyx was a deep black. Let me show you what I found here. I think you can see it. Oh, the light. I'll try to take a picture of this and post it at the end. But actually, natural onyx isn't black. If it's dark black like that, it's usually dyed. It's usually all these different variations of tans and browns and blacks and grays. They're not really black. They're more of a deep gray. So I actually learned something today. I am going to use one of these beads and they're calling these silver green glass pearl beads and they're 12 millimeters. So the first thing I want to do is get all these beads off of this and kind of mix them up. I'm going to set those aside. And just something interesting, I was looking up onyx and they're saying that it is, they call it a claw or fingernail because it has a similar resemblance. I don't really see how it has similar rese resemblance, but it said the name got its use because of the shape and brightness of the bands on its shows when sliced. A variety of colors are commonly found throughout various countries of the world. These countries include Mexico, Argentina, Brazil, Australia, South Africa, Madagascar, India, and the United States. And onyx was used for thousands of years and has a long history of many different civilizations. They used it in pottery and all kinds of stuff. I'm getting my information from a web website called thecrystalcouncil.com. So if you want to go look up some more information on onyx or any other crystals or beads, that would be a good place to go. But they say that onyx is a stone that offers up powerful vibrations of protection, strength, focus, and willpower. This stone is here to continuously push you forward in life. So this seems like it would be a really good stone to use in a mala necklace. And in a mala necklace, we're going to need 108 beads plus this bead. And usually they are knotted, but these holes are not big enough for me to knot them. So we're just going to string them up. So for those of you who do not know what mala is or had never heard of that, a mala is a strand of beads, usually 108 or a fraction of that. And it's used for keeping count during meditation. I kind of liken it sort of unto a rosary bead or a prayer beads. Um, they've been used for thousands of years and Western culture has just recently really adopted it into their styles and stuff, but there is a purpose to the mala. You could wear it around your neck or you could wrap it around your wrist several times. 
and it is a tool for focusing awareness and concentration during your spiritual practices or your meditation or prayer. Before somebody starts meditating, they usually have an intention, something that they're focusing on. And by wearing your mala throughout the day, it is a reminder of what your intention was. What maybe you've been dedicating yourself to today or wanting to think about or improve, whatever that mala might have been for the day. So I decided to check to see if these beads would fit on some hemp and they actually did. So I'm restringing them back over to some hemp cordon because I'm going to like it a lot better. I have some ideas. So I have them all strung up. Don't they look nice together? Now to go to step two. I've made mala necklaces in three different ways. I've just strung them up, didn't knot them, just straight beading. I have knotted them, and then I have also crocheted them. One thing about the crocheted ones, they are a lot longer, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but look how much longer they are. So I've got to decide what I want to do with these. Do I want to just string them straight like I've already got them? Do I want to knot them? Or do I want to crochet them? Because these beads look more on the rustic side, I decided to just crochet them. When I did that, I just used a chain stitch. I put all the beads on to my cording, and like I said, this is hemp cording, and I made sure when I started that I had quite a bit of thread left, and I chain stitch one, brought a bead down, chain stitch another one, bead down, chain stitch one, so forth. This particular one, I actually chain stitched two in between each bead, and that's why this one wound up being as long as it is. This one, I think I'm really going to like the length to it. It's not going to be overly long, but it's going to be long enough where you can have it around your wrist several times. Now, originally, I was going to use this bead for the center bead here. But a couple things. The hole's not big enough for both of these to go through. Also, it's a little small. I need to, this is a 12 millimeter, and it's not quite big enough. And I'm going to still use that. I thought about using one of these zebra beads because the holes are big enough, but I'm not, I don't really like the looks of that. And I look through these lamp work beads, and there's really nothing in here. Now, this would have been perfect if it hadn't have been broken. But because it's broken, it's not going to work. Although, I don't know how big. That hole doesn't look that big either. Let me go see if I can find a bigger bead with big holes that will go with this strand. So I found these beads. I looked through my wooden beads and I think this is going to look really nice. And then I have some of these beads. I'm thinking of maybe flanking them. Let's see what they look like. So we could use this. This would be at the end. That doesn't look too shabby. I like that. We could use these.
or we could just use only the wooden bead. Funny thing, I thought I was going to like these better, but I like these better. Or I could just only do the wooden bead. Although the hole is really, really big. So I would need to put ginormous knots on either side. I actually don't really like this. I like the contrast of this. So I decided to put those little crystal beads on either side. And then I, what I did is I tied an overhand knot, added the crystal bead, one of these beads, the wood bead, another one of those beads, another crystal bead, and did another overhand knot. And now all I'm going to do is tie this thing on a couple of times, maybe four times. And then I'm going to untwist this fiber here. And do a little extra thingy on there. One thing I do need to do is one more overhand knot. It's all complete. We now have our onyx turquoise and wooden mala bead necklace from items I got out of the June 2021 curated bead box subscription. I love the rustic look of this. I've got a little ravelly thing going on here. It's very, very boho. What do you think of my crocheted mala necklaces? Do you like these? Or do you like them that are knotted better? Or do you prefer them just strung like regular necklaces, just a straight string of beads? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd really appreciate it if you gave me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. That way you can learn more about different types of jewelry and tips and watch unboxings and all. Mostly though, I hope you all have a fantastically wonderful day. This is Terry Jeanette with the Tapping Flamingo signing out for now. Bye-bye.